All right, so in this video, we're gonna be solving number eight on the uh, tide worksheet from ANAV. And I'm gonna use this template here uh, to solve this problem. The instructions for how to do one of these tide at any time problems are at the bottom of table three. Um, and uh, this is just some data that uh, we're gonna collect from the problem. And then this is sort of, uh, you know, my interpretation of what the instructions at the bottom of table three mean. So first of all, let's take the data over here and transfer it over to here so that we can um, continue with this problem. So let's, we're just gonna grab each little bit and put it where it belongs. So the draft of the vessel is 24 feet. So here's vessel draft. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put 24 there, okay? Uh, I wish to pass over an obstruction near Lovell Island, Maine. All right, so the place is Lovell Island. So I'm just going to put that up there. And it's May 6th. So I'll put that up here. All right. Uh, the charted depth is 22 feet. Okay, so the depth of the obstruction is 22 feet. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. And... The safety margin is three feet. Well, another way of saying safety margin is under keel clearance. So that's gonna go up here. Well, if I draw 24 feet and I'm required to have three foot clearance, well, then my required, a three foot UKC, then my required clearance is gonna be 27 feet, okay? Okay, good. Well. If I'm required to have 27 feet and I'm passing over a rock that's at 22 feet, well, I can't pass over that rock at low tide. There's only 22 feet. I'll be five feet short. So what do I need the, the tide to be at? Well, I'm going to take 22 and subtract it from 27. I'm going to get five. I need the, the tide to be plus five, five feet higher than the datum. At datum, mean lower low water, the depth over that rock is going to be 22 feet. I need it to go up five feet until it's 27 feet before I can pass over that meeting my draft and my UKC. Okay, great, so we got that. So we're gonna have to find a plus five tide. Now, there's some more parameters. Ooh, uh, it's gonna be the earliest time after 0200. So after 0200, on 26 May. And, oh, you know what? It says daylight savings time. But Massachusetts, uh, I know that the time reading for that is 75 anyway, which is plus five. And there is another clue that I'm in daylight savings time. If daylight savings time wasn't enough clue for you, ZD plus four is. And what that means is that, yes, it is daylight savings time. And that means I'm going to have to add an hour. And I already have a row over here that's conveniently located for that. Whatever my times are, I'm going to have to add an hour to all of them. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and, uh, oh, I don't need to put that in range, though, because the, as you'll see here, this is time and this is range. Okay, so I'm going to have to add an hour to those times. Okay, great. Well, Lovell Island, it's not one of the uh, stations. It's one, it's one of the subordinate stations. So what we're going to have to do is go into the back of the book, into the index of stations, and find Lovell Island. And it turns out that it's station 941. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this there. Now you don't have to do all this stuff, but I find it's good because if I do it, then if for some reason, if I want to go back and look up, the, if I want to go back and check my work, I don't have to go back to all the tables and figure out where everything is, okay? So now that I know it's 941, now I'm going to go to uh, table two. So this is an excerpt from table two in the book. So here you can see 941 Lovell Island, and here's all the data. So this is the time difference from high water. So up here, I've got my row here for uh, table one data, table two data. This is the data from table two. So I'm gonna write my time corrections on this row right here. So my correction for high water is plus zero, oh, zero hours, two minutes. And my correction for low water is plus, zero and it looks like that's 01 so just one minute so it's very little difference all right and um oh what's my range so my range for high water and, it, and by the way if you're not sure what these columns are you slide right up to the top of this page and you'll see uh um high water low water high water low water time and range so this is going to be minus 0.04 okay minus 0. 
four. All right. And, oh, no correction at all right there. Zero. Okay. So, what am I going to do now? Well, I got to go now to my reference station, table one. Well, it's, it looks like here it's on Boston, which is on page uh, 36. So I'm just going to go ahead and put Boston here. And that's page 36. So now I'm going to go to page 36. When you go to page 36, you're going to look for 6 May and you're going to get this. So this actually is the excerpt from page, whatever page it is, table one. All right. And for Boston on May 6th. All right. And now here we go. So now the parameters are the earliest time after 0200 daylight savings time. Well, table three says what I need to do is I need to find the high, the, I need to find the time of a high or low before my event and after. So 0200 is going to be between these two. So I'm going to need to take this time, which by the way is a low water because the sea is 7.9, 1.9, and this time, which is a high water. So this is my low water, 2344. So I'm just going to put low up here, 23. 44 and my uh, height is 1.9 okay and then uh, my other one over here is going to be 055 okay zero five 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 and the height at that time is an 8.5 okay so I'm just going to put 8.5 here okay now I'm going to do some math five Seven. Okay, great. Now this one over here, once you do all the math, is going to turn into uh, 24, 45, okay, which we will convert to 0, 0, 4, 5, okay? So, anyway, um, now, um, I guess I could have left it at 24, 45 if I wanted to, but anyway, there it is, okay? So now I got to do this over here. So I'm going to subtract 0.4 from that. And I'm going to get 8.1. And this one is still going to be 1.9 because there's no correction. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is now I have to figure out my duration and my range. So the duration is the time between these two and the range is the height between these two. So I'm going to go uh, uh, 0, 6, 5, 7 minus zero zero four five and my duration is six hours and 12 minutes okay so that's at six hours 12 minutes now my height is going to be 8.1 minus 1.9 okay and uh, be careful by the way if you had a negative tide okay if you had uh, if if this was like a negative uh, um, below datum you would have to uh you know either be opposite signs so you'd have to um, add them. But anyway, I'm going to be subtracting them because the, the signs are the same. And when I do that, I get a range of 6.2 feet. All right, now I'm going to need this data to enter into the, uh, the uh, table three. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this, the duration, the range, and I need my height of tide. These are three of the variables. Uh, table three is comprised of four variables. You will always have three and you'll have to extract the fourth. So let's do this. Okay. Okay. So the instructions in table three say, choose the tide that uh, is closest to your time. So the, tide is, the time that's closest to my time is 0045. All right, and that's the instructions right down at the bottom of table three. So I'm going to say, um, uh, so what was the height of tide? I, I am, in order for me to figure out how much tide needs to change, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the required height of tide and I'm going to subtract where I started at that low. All right, and so that means that that is going to be, I'm going to need the tide to come up 3.1 feet. So at low tide, the tide will be at a 1.9. And how high will I, how much uh, will, uh, will I need for the tide to rise? 
until it's a five. Well, if I'm starting at 1.9 and I need to be a plus five, then I'm gonna have to have the tide come up 3.1 feet. So now I've got all of the bits and pieces that I'm gonna to need to enter table three. We're going to enter table three with our range, okay, our duration, all right? And uh, for this problem, we're actually gonna start down at the bottom. So our range is six feet. So here's our range, and there's six feet. So we're gonna be in this row, okay? Now, what we're gonna do now is, uh, how much does our range have to change? Well, it turns out our range has to change by three feet. So I'm gonna slide over here until I get to three. So now I'm gonna be in this column, okay? Now, so we have now used the six and the three. We gotta use this one now. Here's the duration. So I use this and I use that, okay? Now I've gotta combine it with my duration. So what's my duration? It's 612. Well, 612, I'd probably use 620 because that's the closest. Uh, it looks like, yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. I should use three, uh, looks like 612 is a little bit closer there. I should probably use 310, all right? And this little thing here, I've got it off of six. It's not gonna make that much of a difference, but I should probably be using 310 instead of three, okay? So, what am I gonna do with that? Um, well, actually, 612 is actually halfway between these two, so why don't we use 305, okay? I can interpolate. Now, I can interpolate, it's not super critical. By not interpolating, if I chose this one, I'd be five minutes off. By choosing this one, I'd be five minutes off. So, does that really matter? Not so much. I'm gonna choose 305 because I'm an intelligent human being, but also realize that as an intelligent human being, I don't care about five minutes. So three minutes and five seconds is, is, three hours and five seconds is more or less how long it's gonna take for the tide to go from 1.9 feet to five. So now we apply our time, our, our, our uh, all right, so I'm gonna interpolate between those two, okay? So, what time, I used the low tide, which was 1.19. So if I use the low tide, I'm gonna use this time. So zero, zero, four, five. And now I'm gonna add three hours and five minutes to that, three, zero, five. And that's gonna give me zero, one, five, three. Zero, three, fifty. All right, now. Because I added uh, an hour already, I'm already in daylight savings time. So 3.50 is when I need to be at that rock, okay? 3.50 is when I need to be at that rock. And um, uh, now, if I was about 20 miles away from there, okay? So let's say I've gotta be there at 3.50. Now this problem stops at this point. 3.50, oh, 0350 is the answer. But let's say I was uh, two hours up a river, okay? Uh, I'm 20 miles up the river, I'm gonna make 10 knots. I estimate I'll make 10 knots. Well, if I wanna be there at 350, I'm gonna leave two hours earlier so that by the time I get there at 350, it'll be at the right tide. So in, in essence then, if I wanted to be there at 350, but I was 20 miles away from there, I would, and I was making 10 knots, I would leave two hours early, so I would leave at uh, 0150. And I hope you understand that because that's another problem on the worksheet. Now. What I'm going to do here is, if you're interested, I'm going to take you through I'll take you through this little series here, okay? Um, so, this is uh, just a little enactment, reenactment of, of, of what's going on in the problem here. So, this right here is supposed to be the obstruction at level. And uh, this is, uh, you know, you would really be looking down at your chart, but this is like, you know, look, so here's, this would be your datum 22 feet right here, okay? Um, and that was the, uh, okay, so we can't actually do that because we, we draw 24 feet, we'd run aground. So here over here, this is our draft, 24 feet, but then we're required to have three feet UKC. So I need actually for the tide to increase to such a point that I can have 27 feet above there. Well, at 22 feet, that's no good, okay? So I need the tide to come up at such a point that now I have 24 feet for my draft plus three feet for UKC, 27 feet, all right? 27 feet. So 
There's the 22, all right? I need it. So 22 is what the charted depth, and I need five feet more than that. So that's why I need a plus five tide, okay? So 24 plus three minus 22 means I need a plus five tide in order to get over that rock, all right? And uh, I think that's all I really wanted to say about this.